And we want to bring up the uh, we got the standings for the fancy MVPs because I want to bring these up because we've got to talk about the man at the very very top. <laughs> Obviously, we've got we've got the usual suspects there in Mahomes, Herbert, Murray, but. <sighs> Claypool, talk to me about Claypool. Is this a boom or bust player? Is he going to be a flash in the pan or is he here to stay? It's hard to tell right now. I can tell you he is Canadian. Uh, like my co-host on Good Morning Football, Nate Burleson, I can tell you he uh, crushed it, obviously. Four touchdowns, 116 yards. He had 11 targets. I do like the fact that they gave him the ball in the run game, too. He had three carries in this one i'm not expecting these sort of numbers no one can uh, keep and continue and i don't want to chase touchdowns but if you bought a waiver claim you've got extra spots on your bench which you should this year especially in 2020 given covid i definitely would add him uh temper your expectations for him juju smith schuster still a thing big ben will target any receiver that's healthy and available to him but offense has been the story of the nfl through the first five weeks i expect it to continue going forward uh, and i do like the matchup up against the browns this week in their secondary. Okay, I like how you came with a bit of warning for Claypool there because I've gone straight in on waiver wires <laughs> for him. I'm all about the bandwagon every single week. Um, I want to ask you as well about Brandon Cooks. It was great to see him get his first touchdown in a Texans jersey. They had a bounce back with their new interim head coach. Now that the Falcons have got rid of Dan Quinn, are we likely to see a bit of a bounce back for them this week? Should we be stocking up or, in my case, stop benching Gurley? Yeah, see, Gurley's getting those touchdowns. I mean, he, sometimes he's getting carried into the end zone by the lineman, but whatever works, right? Uh, I think the key to this offense has been Julio Jones. I was very surprised he was inactive yet again with that lingering hamstring issue. Uh, this season, of course, injuries have crept up more than other seasons. So he's, to me, he's the key to it all. Calvin does better and eats and does his when Julio's out there. So that's what I would be looking forward to uh, into the next coming weeks. As far as far as that spark, I mean, yes, the Falcons are missing something. They're missing something in a big way. It was very nice to see Romeo Cornell dancing after a win. It's not just a jump start or a spark. It's also a wake-up call for the offense to get it together. So I would expect good things. But I don't want to downplay that the Falcons aren't a bad offense. They are good. They are clicking. These guys are, are putting up numbers for you. It's the Julio Jones thing that sets everything in disarray. Now, quite a few fantasy football owners will be needing a new quarterback this week after that horrific injury for Dak Prescott. Um, who should you be targeting if Dak was your QB1? Who's a good bet for the rest of the season? Yes, for weeks now on Good Morning Football, I've said, hello, excuse me, I know nobody pays attention to the Chargers, but Justin Herbert does not care who he is facing. He has faced three MVPs in the three of the four games that he had played. Uh, he last night did his thing, uh, bright lights, his first primetime game, didn't get the win, but the numbers are there. Keenan Allen dealing with a bit of a setback, so I'm a little worried about that, but Mike Thomas, not Mike Thomas, Mike Williams steps right in there, big body guy making a re ridiculous highlight catch so I think Justin Herbert's a guy you can look at to throw a lot um Andy Dalton also available on the waiver wire he's got a loaded offense he's got Gallup who we clearly connected in in that game when we lost Dak Prescott sadly uh and I think he's going to distribute and dish the ball out accordingly hey Kate uh this is Rob Ryan I gotta I gotta imagine it's gotta be absolutely crazy to be in New York City with both football teams 0-5. I mean, we know how that media can be out there. That's just got to be an absolute zoo out there. It is an absolute zoo, especially because you can't really go outside and enjoy things and go to Broadway and do all the other sports events or get lost in the distraction of anything. These guys are front and center. You know this very well, Rob, especially your, your, uh, your brother being here so long. It is a tough audience, even if it's on a Zoom. I can't imagine Joe Judge thrown out the gate having to face uh, face the heat from that media. They need to get it together or they're looking at draft picks nice and early. I don't know what the Giants would do in that situation. Is Daniel Jones their guy of the future? I have the same questions about Sam Darnold, though. Okay, Kate, as, as you're a fantasy football expert, I did want to put to you a trade or two that we've had come through to us here. People wanting to get an expert opinion on whether they've completely tanked their season or not. Okay, this first one, I think I know the answer, but based on what you said, I'm intrigued. Would you or should you trade away DK Metcalf for Julio Jones? Is that draft like daft or madness? Absolute madness. I would never trade DK Metcalf at this point. He has emerged 
want me to say it? I'll say it on Sky Sky Sports. Sure, I think he's the best wide receiver in the National Football League here in 2020. He is a true wide receiver one. I don't, it does not make sense physically, <laughs> anatomically, how fast he is and how big he is. He's gained the trust of Russell Wilson, who is wheeling and dealing through the air and has to throw a ton because of their defense and the lack of defense that they have there. And numbers-wise, DK Metcalf scores touchdowns. It's what he does. He sets up shop and, you know, camps in the end zone, whereas Julio Jones perennially, through a beautiful career, has never really caught the touchdowns. I just trust that offense more. I trust DK Metcalf more than Julio. One more quick one before we let you go, because I know you're very busy. Um, Jeff has been in touch on Twitter. He got Julian Edelman for AJ Green and Mike Davis. Good trade, bad trade? Oh, that's really hard, actually. I'm going to say, I want. what was the Mike Davis side, Hannah? I'm sorry, one he more got, time. He got Mike Davis and AJ Green uh, for Julian Edelman. So he got Edelman, traded away Ed AJ Green and Mike Davis. 100%. Edelman has not been performing. Also, he's in that Julio world of not scoring a ton of touchdowns, whereas Mike Davis, I think people are worried about what his role will be when Christian McCaffrey comes back. The way that he has been able to produce for this Carolina team, there is no way that they are not featuring or at least giving 10 or 12 touches to our guy Mike Davis. I know that that hurts Christian McCaffrey fantasy owners out there, but they paid him a lot of money. They're going to want to give him fresh legs. Carolina, one of the big surprises of this season so far, the way they're operating with a new head coach, a new offensive coordinator, and Joe Brady, yet somehow clicking in the world of COVID. So I would want to hold on to Mike Davis. That is good news for my roster. Kay, great to speak to you. I could talk fantasy to you all day, but we will let you go. Thank you so much. Bye, guys.